Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 5, Chapter 1, Text Number 18. Yashat Sapatnan Vijigi Shamano Griheshu Nirvishya Yateta Purvam Atyeti Durga Shrita Urjitarin Shineshu Kamam Vichare Dvipashti Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada one who is situated in household life and who systematically conquers his mind and five sense organs is like a king in his fortress who conquers his powerful enemies. After one has been trained in household life and his lusty desires have decreased, he can move anywhere without danger. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The Vedic system of four varnas and four ashramas is very scientific. And its entire purpose is to enable one to control the senses. Before entering household life, Grihastha Ashrama, a student is fully trained to become Jitendriya a conqueror of the senses. Such a mature student is allowed to become a householder and because he was first trained in conquering his senses, he retires from household life and becomes vanaprastha as soon as the strong waves of youthful life are passed and he reaches the verge of old age at 50 years or slightly more. Then after being trained, further trained, he accepts sannyas. He is then a fully learned and renounced person who can move anywhere and everywhere without fear of being captivated by material desires. The senses are considered very powerful enemies as a king in a strong fortress can conquer powerful enemies so a householder in Grihastha Ashrama, household life, can conquer the lusty desires of youth and be very secure when he takes vanaprastha and sannyasa. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport. So we are reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam about Maharaj Priyavrata. And here we are seeing Lord Brahma's instructions to him. And uh, in this verse, Lord Brahma is saying, Yaha shat sapatnan vijigi shamano griheshu nirvishya yate tapurvam. He is referring to the mind and the five sense organs as uh, six. In the previous verse, they were considered as sapatnan. Prabhupada translated that as uh, six wives and <coughs> co-wives. And here Prabhupada has translated them as sapatnan, as adversaries, enemies. <coughs> so the mind and the six and the five senses together, they are actually the enemies of the living entity, when they are not controlled. And when they are controlled, they de behave differently. So, vijigisha manaha, jigisha mana, vijigisha mana, with a desire to conquer, to become victorious. This verse, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also, you, uh, in that verse that he quoted, Nishkincha nasya bhagavad bhajanon mukhasya param param jigi mishor bhavasagarasya jigi mishoho jigi mishoho bhavasagarasya jigi mishoho means to cross over the bhavasagara 
one who is intent on crossing over. So here in the same way, yeah, shapsat, shat sapatnan vijigishamano. The purpose is to conquer the six enemies. With that intent, grheshu nirvishya. If one has entered the grihastha life, household life, yatheta purvam, and he is continuing, yatheta vijigisha manaha, he is trying to conquer. So, the whole attitude and the whole approach and the whole purpose is very different from a, a person who is practicing pravritti marga where his intent is to enjoy the senses, maybe with some regulations. But here in this case, what Brahma is referring to is vijigishamana yatheta, yatheta vijigishamana purvam. And here in the, uh, in the first place, that is the purpose of this. And in this way, atyeti durgashrita urjitari. These are, uh, these uh, sapatnan, shat sapatnan, these six co-wives are urjita areen, areen, are means an enemy, murari, murari. So, ari is an uh, enemy and urjita ari, these are very powerful enemies, not easy to conquer them. And so, uh, just like a king Atyeti, he conquers. Urjita Arin, he conquers the insurmountable, very powerful enemies. Why? How does he do that? Because he is Durga Shrita. He is in a fortress. Durga means a fort. That's why we have a place nearby called Chitra Durga. Right? Supposed to have an old fort there. So, Durga means a fort and uh, that's why this material world is known as Durga Dham uh, where there is a fort, we are shackles, the conditioned souls are shackled and one who oversees this material world is known as Durga Devi. <coughs> so that's how Durga, Durga Dham, Durga Devi, all these words come. So, atyeti durgashita urjitarin, just like a king can conquer if he is well protected in a fort, then he can conquer the enemies because he is in a very strong position. And in the same way, kshineshu kamam. So, if a person enters gruheshu nirvishya, uh, with the intention of vijigish shat sapatnan vijigisha manaha, in order to conquer the six enemies. And in this way, if his karma kshineshu, the waves of karma, uh, which would be in a young person, is kshineshu, it diminishes. And in such a person, Vicharet, he can move around anywhere. And such a person is a vipaschit, a, a learned person, an experienced person, a person who is interested in spiritual life. So that is the message that Lord Brahma is saying here. One who is situated in household life, yaha griheshu nirvishya, and who systematically conquers his mind and five sense organs, and who systematically conquers vijigi shamanaha, his mind and five sense organs, shat sapatnan, is like a king in his fortress, durga shrita, who conquers atyeti, his powerful enemies, urjit arin. After one has been trained yatheta in household life and his lusty desires kamam have decreased kshineshu kamam he can move anywhere vichare 
without any danger, without danger. <coughs> so, uh, Lord Brahma is giving different arguments from different perspectives why Priyavrata should come to become the king and even by becoming a king and being in a palace and when you are a king and you are likely to get married and all of that, that is not going to be a disadvantage uh, is the message that Lord Brahma is trying to convey. And Srila Prabhupada has written very nicely that the Vedic system of four Varnas and four Ashramas is very scientific and its entire purpose this is the whole purpose its entire purpose entire purpose is not just how we can systematically exploit the material world and enjoy our senses that's not the purpose the, and its entire purpose is to enable one to control the senses so that is the purpose, to control the senses. The senses are powerful and they are enemies when they are not controlled, urjitarim. And the entire purpose is vijigishamanaha. The purpose of this division, all of this is vijigishamanaha. And uh, <clears throat> uh, there were many instances of Shila during Srila Prabhupada's life. There were many, he, they were young disciples and he had given them sannyas. But after some years, some of those disciples as sannyasis could not maintain sannyas principles. And then there were a few uh, unfortunate um, happenings like that. And at that time, one of the occasions when Prabhupada was discussing informally, he said, this is because these are all young sannyasis. Still the waves of karma are very powerful and unfortunately they are, they are falling victim to it. So uh, Prabhupada was conscious of it that they were young devotees for somehow they were very inspired and they wanted to practice and they wanted to be sannyas and they had accepted sannyas ashram. And uh, so, uh, but then there were some accidents that were happening. <coughs> So, in the, when one is young, this uh, waves of karma are very strong and uh, the grihastha ashrama experience is expected to kshineshu kamam. But, importantly, the very purpose of this whole thing must be vijigisha manaha. Now I'm going to enjoy my life, enjoy my, in, the, in the company of my wife and children and I'll have nice life that if that is not the attitude of a devotee <coughs> so uh, from the beginning in in krishna also describes in the bhagavad gita that how kama is a great enemy of the living entity and kamas Resting places, manas and indriya and buddhi. So these are the places where kama, which is actually the great enemy. The senses and the mind are not the real enemy. When the, when the senses and the mind becomes the sitting place for kama, then it becomes an enemy and works in a way counter to the real interest of the living entity. <coughs> And hence, Krishna also describes tasmat uh, indriyanyado niyamya bharatarshabha tasmatvam indriyanyado indriya niyamya adho from the very beginning. Uh, hence, one has to, indriya niyama is the most important thing. And in this way, papmanam prajahyenam one can overcome Otherwise, karma is a papmanam, is a symbol of sin. It simply perpetuates sin and the living entity becomes implicated. And the nature of sin, of karma is that 
Kama results in sinful activities. And the nature of Kama is Jnana Vijnana Nashanam. That's why we have to be very careful. We are interested in Jnana, Divya Jnana. And we are interested in realization of that Jnana, Vijnana. And Kama and an encouragement of Kama is Jnana Vijnana Nashanam. Then what is left for a spiritualist if Jnana and Vijnana are going to be destroyed? And that's why Krishna explains that Tasmatvam Indriyanyadav Niyamya Bharatarshabha Papmanam Prajahyenam Prajahi means Jahi means to become victorious. Prajahi means become fully victorious. Papmanam Prajahyenam Yenam Papmanam Prajahi he is encouraging Arjuna, you should conquer this sin, symbol of sin, prajahi enam, because otherwise this is jnana vijnana nashanam. So it's a very serious thing and hence in the Varnashrama, very, from the very beginning, there is the emphasis on controlling of the senses. Prabhupada has explained here in the purport, Brahmacharya life is to become Jitendriya. He has to become, he has to conquer his senses. Because if the sense control is not there, we cannot have any realization of the Supreme Lord. So that's the uh, uh, most important thing. There's another verse in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, a very famous verse. Once Prabhupada was on a morning walk with some devotees and so this sannyasi disciple quoted this verse and said, Srila Prabhupada, the Shastra says, Chaitanya Charitamrita says, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra Khoye, Lava Matra, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoye. He quoted that verse and asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, the Shastra say that even a Lava Matra, even a lava is a very short moment, uh, one twelfth of a, one twelfth or one eighth of a minute or something, one a small fraction of a minute. Lava matra sadhu sangha. If one has association of a sadhu, even for a few, for a moment, sarva siddhi hoye, all perfection comes. How does that happen, Srila Prabhupada? How lava matra, just for a few moments? And uh, so Prabhupada explained that, yes, it, even lava matra sadhu sangha is enough. Provided, it also depends on the recepting, re, re, receptivity of the, of the soul. And then Prabhupada gave the example, just like wood. If the wood is dry, and comes in contact with fire, immediately it blazes. On the other hand, if the wood is wet, even you come in contact with fire, it may not catch fire, it may take a long time. And then Prabhupada explained, the rules and regulations of Krishna consciousness is the drying process. It is meant to make the wood dry or it is meant to make the consciousness ready to receive the mercy of the association of the sadhu. Otherwise it can take a very long time. So uh, these rules and regulations, tasmatvam indriya nyadav niyamya, indriya niyama rules are there, that is meant to prepare the consciousness so that the consciousness can now benefit, can receive the mercy of the devotee and benefit from that. <clears throat> and so Prabhupada has explained that this is a very scientific process, Varnashrama. It is meant for Kamam Kshineshu. That's why we see in uh, among Vaishnava Sampradayas sometimes, now that this is the principle, but how this is applied, varies according to time and circumstances. We have the Madhva Sampradaya. In the Madhva Sampradaya, all sannyasis take 
all they take sannyas at a very young age and they never marry that is the general by and large that is the process maybe here and there some exceptions are there but by and large and for them their example is madhvacharya who also took sanyas without entering grihastha ashram and in the ramanuja sampradaya which is also another vaishnava sampradaya they take sanyas only after going through the grihastha ashram by and large maybe here and there there are exceptions that is because they follow their example ramanuja acharya also was a grihastha and later on became a sanyasi so like this there are varieties of examples in the vaishnava sampradaya and we see how uh, when shila prabhupad was establishing the krishna consciousness movement uh, this was one of the things that he prabhupad mentioned my spiritual master created a uh, matha gaudiya matha where there was only opportunities for sanyasis and brahmacharis but i created a mandira and where i wanted to give opportunity for women and grihasthas all of that <clears throat> so uh this is how shila prabhupad now we see how prabhupad founded all of these things on the basis of the instructions given in the uh, in the shrimad bhagavatam where even if this kind of an attitude exists if this kind of an intent exists and it may be suitable for some people to go through this kind of a situation <clears throat> now in uh, 1976 prabhupad had invited devotees to come from all over the world to observe the gaura purnima festival in mayapur so uh, still the long building which was still under construction and some portion of it was ready and devotees could stay and there were more rooms along the boundary and prabhupad had encouraged and devotees had worked very hard to get those facilities ready and still it was not in the very best of condition and many many devotees started coming there about one 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 time there were 350 devotees flew from different parts of the world they landed in calcutta airport and many many buses to bring 350 devotees and the next day another 90 devotees came from different parts of the world maybe about 600 700 devotees from all over the, you can imagine and for all the people of uh, mayapur it was like what is this <laughs> where are all these white men and women coming from and all of these kind of it was like a very shocking thing and uh, <clears throat> so prabhupad was very hopeful that all the devotees will come and they had they were very happy to have uh, to be there and all the devotees were also eager to be with prabhupad so just before these devotees were arriving there were a few gbc meetings happening and the gbcs had lot of sanyasis and at that time there was a kind of a a a, a kind of a a schism a kind of a undercurrent going on in different parts of the world in his con temples there was a kind of a superiority feeling of the sanyasis and they would look down at the grihasthas and they would think that these grihasthas are becoming a burden to his con what is this we have to maintain them and their children and all of that and their house and their sense gratification and all of that so actually prabhupad had addressed that uh, 1975 itself there was an issue about this and prabhupad had addressed that prabhupad wrote one letter which is actually a very instructive letter in uh, 1975 of january uh, because already there were grihasthas in iskon and prabhupad had made a how a grihastha can be in the temple prabhup this was a means important letter any householder devotee who is working full time with his wife as a sankirtan book distributor or temple managerial duties 
artist, cook, etc., shall be provided food, shelter, and other bare minimum necessities by the temple itself. They should not cook their own meals separate from the temple meals. If they have children, then some minimal allowance may be given according to the number of children. If they want anything extra or over and above what the temple president sees as absolute necessity, then they should work outside. The temple cannot pay for anything beyond the bare necessities. And definitely the BBT cannot pay, etc. Something is there. Our philosophy is simple living and high thinking, not sense gratification. The temple presidents and leaders, elder students, must show this by example. Temple or ashrama means for renunciation and renounced persons. If one is engaged in self-realization process, then his material necessities become almost nil. Persons who do not like this can work outside. So, very important instruction uh, here, Prabhupada, how he had allowed a grihastha to be in the temple. He should depend, he should have, he should only expect bare minimum necessities. And another word that Prabhupada has, absolute necessity, minimum necessity. So these are the, uh, already Prabhupada had set this as a, as a principle so that grihasthas and grihastha life should not become a burden to the organization which is meant to preach Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada had set this, but nevertheless this kind of a, a feeling among the among the sannyas, some sannyasis had developed. Another thing that was happening was, if it was just a feeling of superiority and because definitely sannyasis are superior to the grihasthas, if it was just like that, it was all right. But then it had taken a certain form. There was there were there was the Radha Damodar traveling Sankirtan party. It was called RDTSKP. So, which was headed by Tamal Krishna Maharaj and a few other sannyasis were there and a lot of brahmacharis and they had many buses and they would travel from one city to another city in America. And these sannyasis would go to a certain temple and then in the temple, in the class and other places, they would explain that how sannyas life is so good and brahmachari should have association of sannyasis and brahmachari should avoid grihasthas association because after all they are fallen and it is not the very conducive thing. And they would hear such class and then afterwards at the end, after a few days when that party is moving out of the temple, Half the brahmacharis or maybe many brahmacharis would join them and go away. And the temple would become suddenly, the temple president was mostly a grihastha and he had a few brahmacharis and they were doing book distribution, they were doing different things to raise money. The book distribution would fall and the financial position of the temple would come down and they would have all kinds of problem. And then they, this party would go to another temple, repeat the same thing take away a few more brahmacharis and their party was growing and all the temples were suffering and the temple presidents were very upset about the whole thing. But then the leader is a powerful GBC, sannyasi and all of that and they didn't know what to do. So this was the situation that was going on, uh, uh, trying to disturb the organization as a temple. So Prabhupada had heard about it. Now before this itself, when the GBCs met, they all had a discussion and they passed a few resolutions. And in those resolutions they made that, yes, grihasthas, uh, for their finance, they cannot depend on the temple. They have to find their own means, which means all the temple presidents have to leave the temple. Grihasthas who were there had to leave, not only temple presidents, others also had to leave. And those kind of resolutions they had made and then some things against women and all of those kind of things. So these resolutions were brought before Prabhupada and then uh, Prabhupada uh, heard and then he said, uh, he gave the example of this is becoming like Niyamagraha. 
you are becoming true to your just for the sake of rules and all of that so and then uh, this was going on and then these rules but then these uh, the, and then the gbcs and the sanyasis they had their very strong counter to that and they would come and explain prabhupad the renunciation is so important otherwise what will happen if they are undergoing you know in the presence of sense gratification and all of these women there oh this is such a big disturbance for spiritual life and and the spirit of renunciation is lost so prabhupada was yes spirit of renunciation is very important he would encourage like that and this was going on and then these one by one these devotees had started coming there and then the temple pra- and there was festival was about to begin and then the temple presidents came to know about the gbc resolutions and they all were very disturbed and they all came and met shila prabhupad and they explained what is going on and prabhupad heard they also them also very sympathetically and then what happened <clears throat> you will see i'll read some portions this was 14th of march 1976 just a few days before gor purnima jayatirtha prabhu also showed up he asked that rameshwara uh, prabhupad jayatirtha told okay gradually more gb prabhupad was sitting in the morning it was on the veranda of the building lotus building where prabhupad had his quarters and then one by one the gbcs started gathering gradually more gbc members arrived on the balcony pancha dravida swami brought up the sanyasi grihastha conflict again already it was going on during morning walks there would be conversations and all of those kinds were already the mood was like that although everyone was happy there were devotees kirtans all that happening but this schism this kind of a temple presidents grihasthas having one kind of a thing and a few sanyasis having this this kind of a kind was going uh, undercurrent was going on uh, so pancha dravida swami brought up the sanyasi grihastha conflict again Thamal Krishna Goswami Garga Muni and Bhagwan Das eventually joined the discussion which went on until 1:30 pm the topic came up again because many devotees feel that the resolution pa- resolutions gbc resolutions passed are too drastic the resolution calling for all householders to earn a living outside of the temple financial structure includes temple presidents Shila Prabhupad was told that such regulations were meant to protect ISKCON from becoming financially overburdened so this was the argument that they had d- developed Shila Prabhupad has given his approval in principle but there is considerable discontent among the temple presidents most of them are married men and feel that they are simply being discriminated against by the sanyasis they are very apprehensive about how the new resolutions will be practically applied they also resent what they perceive to be interferences that has that as married men they are less useful than the brahmacharis and sanyasis and perhaps even burdensome to the preaching mission many gbc members including some of the sanyasis are now also having doubts about whether the resolutions passed are actually fair because there were occasions when prabhupad made this kind of comments that this is niyama agraha kali yuga means there will be faults uh, and one should not be criticizing each other it, it one cannot follow the rules and regulations very strictly whether of sanyas ashram sa brahmachari ashram or grihastha ashram we must not become niyama agraha following you know stri- and lose the important spirit of spiritual development so prabhupad had voiced those things so a few gbcs who had passed the resolutions had already started thinking okay there is something not okay with our resolution we have to do that and <clears throat> thus the debate was resumed and shila prabhupad listened as various devotees expressed their views tamal krishna goswami was apparently not prepared to concede any ground on the issue even though nearly everyone else com- else's complaint is against him and his marked pro sanyasi brahmachari inclination it got too late and shila prabhupad sent everyone for lunch without coming to any real conclusion 130 
already lunch time prabhupada told them go and have lunch he heard all the arguments he had not given a conclusive reply <coughs> uh, sent everyone without coming to any real conclusion when everyone had gone tamal krishna maharaj remained behind <laughs> for a minute with shrila prabhupada it appeared he wanted to gain prabhupada's affirmation on his feeling that it is better to be strict he told prabhupada that as a sanyasi he is personally uncompromising in dealings with women to the point that he doesn't speak to any woman whatsoever even when preaching he feels that unless the society is conscientious on this matter there will be a loss of purity and determination to preach prabhupada agreed tamal krishna then left and prabhupada took his bath <clears throat> when prabhupada returned to his room hari shauri is writing this i asked him whether maharaj tamal krishna maharaj attitude of avoiding women in his preaching is a material consideration yes it is prabhupada said however noting my critical tone of voice he corrected me but does that mean he is not a devotee as he sat down at his desk putting on his tilak he noticed a beautiful bookmark that i had placed there picking it up he asked me where it came from some bookmark very nicely handcrafted made i told him it was a gift from krishna rupa dasi an australian brahmacharini <laughs> <clears throat> living in here in mayapur prabhupada exclaimed very appreciatively such nice service how can it be refused i have never stopped women from rendering service simply because they are women see the <laughs> prabhupada's attitude after prasadam he went for his usual nap but arose within 15 minutes Prabhupad could not sleep. <clears throat> I answered the ring of the bell and found him sitting on his bed looking deeply troubled. He was unable to rest because of the controversy. He had a headache. This is a very serious thing. This difference of sanyasi and grihastha he said with a frown. everything will be spoiled so prabhupada was concerned that this kind of a faction schism and uh, is going on and uh, so <clears throat> so hari shauri recalled his comments that the gaudiya math fell into difficult times because shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati had ordered his disciples to form a gbc to conjointly manage and they had simply argued and made their own plans we made a gbc shila prabhupad hari shauri said but still there is splitting prabhupad's reply was brusque and revealing personal ambition then he went to sit in his darshan room in the evening the entire gbc came to see prabhupad once again prabhupad had noticed that there is some kind of a personal ambition that is driving these different kind of a, uh, arguments and all that so now again in the evening the gbcs all came together and prabhupad was sitting there <clears throat> things had come to a head after some discussion one devotee was invited to speak as a representative of all the temple presidents they had held meetings to discuss implications of the new resolutions and he presented the results it seemed that much of the basis of the conflict stemmed from the activities of radha damodar sankirtan party <clears throat> they have gained some they have gained some notoriety for taking unmarried men from temples without asking thereby undermining temple authorities brahmacharis were being told that if they remained in the temples they would end up married entangled in family affairs and therefore useless on the other hand they could accept the alternative of a carefree life traveling and preaching with the traveling party 
in the buses. It was claimed that the effect on the temples was to put them in great difficulty because they were losing the Sankirtan men, their most valuable assets. Tamal Krishna Maharaj was still adamant, defending his party and their record-breaking book distribution. He proclaimed the accusations as outright lies. However, he seemed alone. Most GBC men, although highly appreciative of Radha Damodar Sankirtan party's book distribution and sympathetic to the principle of Vairagya as being the foundation for a spiritually strong society, were now backing away from their earlier stance. After hearing both sides, Prabhupada spoke. <clears throat> he broke the deadlock. He finally settled the issue by wonderfully preaching to everyone that it does not matter what one is. One can do anything and go anywhere for Krishna. We are not to discriminate against anyone on the basis of external dress. One is to be judged on the basis of one's advancement in Krishna consciousness. Quoting the verse, E Krishna Tattva Veta Se Guru Haya, he told them, we cannot say simply because one is Gruhastha, then he must go away. Everyone is entitled to the same facility to preach, he said. Srila Bhakti Vinod was a Gruhastha and his son a lifelong celibate and sannyasi. But both of them were gurus. There was no difference. He said that the tendency to form factions was not good and he wanted it to stop immediately. He, st he stressed there must be cooperation between the temples and the traveling parties and that no one, f no one fixed principle applied to everyone. Living in the temple is preaching also. Cleaning, cooking and doing deity worship. A brahmachari may be allowed to go with the sannyasis, but not if he is holding a responsible service in the temple. He stated the, he stated the proper etiquette for a man to join a, a traveling party. He should do so only with the permission of the temple president. And ideally he said, it is better that the gruhasthas manage the temples and the sannyasis go out preaching. This example was set by the six Goswamis who turned over the management of their temples to their married disciples. As far as the Brahmachari, he said, may do either travel and preach or remain in the temple. As Prabhupada gave his verdict, the room became increasingly packed with devotees eager to understand the solution to the conflict. Finally, Prabhupada concluded, that this competitive spirit and attitude of puffed up prestige was not good. Everyone should remain as a humble servant. Thus he made it clear that he disapproved of the resolutions and ordered the GBC to meet and strike out the controversial ones. Everyone left happy and relieved that the conflict that had grown over a period of year or so was finally resolved. Only Tamal Krishna Goswami <laughs> remained in Srila Prabhupada's room <laughs> requesting his own servant Harishauri also to leave so that he could spend a few minutes alone with Srila Prabhupada. I, Shri, Harishauri is writing, later heard from Maharaj that he discussed with Srila Prabhupada seeking solace and feeling defeated. <clears throat> Uh, he began to lament to Prabhupada that now he felt discouraged, like an enemy in the camp. He said that he didn't want to be an obstacle to the progress of Srila Prabhupada's movement. So perhaps he should not even preach in America anymore. Maybe he should go and preach where he would not be a disturbance to anyone, like China. Or somewhere else. <laughs> so after 20 minutes of talk with Srila Prabhupada, he got up and left. Hari Shauri was on the balcony and he watched him 
make a lonely walk down the veranda and disappear <laughs> in the darkness i entered prabhupad's room hari shauri entered prabhupad's room and found him clearly relieved at having resolved the matter he smiled at me and said of all the gbc tamal krishna is the most intelligent but the problem is those with intelligence want to control everything and he wants to control the whole society he wants to be the supreme controller <laughs> <laughs> so this is what had happened the previous night and uh, tamal krishna had mentioned that yes i should not be a disturbance prabhupad your movement and you have as you have you have been developing in a certain way and maybe i have caused all this because it was very clear that it was you know his idea which was prabhupad had finally undone and so he said that maybe i should go away maybe i should go to china so this what had happened so next morning before mangalarti prabhupad was up there and he called for hari shauri and he said call tamal krishna and trivikrama immediately so hari shauri ran to get tamal krishna and he could before mangalarati prabhupad buzzed me he called for tamal krishna goswami and trivikram swami but i could find only trivikram swami since tamal krishna had already entered the temple and he was in the temple hall prabhupad told trivikram maharaj that he wanted him to go immediately to china with tamal krishna <laughs> <laughs> prabhupad said he had been meditating on it all night he had and he had decided that we should definitely do something in the communist countries and then he also called for gopal krishna and he was brought and then prabhupad told gopal krishna you must go to russia as soon as possible he said that there are opportunities there for book distribution to libraries and as an indian businessman gopal krishna would be well received both trivikram maharaj and gopal krishna were excited by the prospect of opening up vast new preaching fields they both happily agreed word went word was sent out to tamal krishna maharaj but that by, by the time he arrived shila prabhupad to, in shila prabhupad's room prabhupad had gone to the bathroom for his morning uh, to freshen up before his morning walk tamal krishna was visibly shocked at the idea of going to china <laughs> as we waited he began to pace the room up and down voicing all the reasons why he could not possibly go madhu dvisha and guru kripa swamis who were there accompanied him to give him some support prabhupad had altered a decision many times previously upon further discussion of an issue they felt that tamal had good strong arguments and might change prabhupad's mind upon hearing them after a few minutes shila prabhupad returned and sat behind his low desk to apply his tilak tamal krishna maharaj sat before him and presented all the reasonable arguments why he should not go to china should go back to america continue with the traveling sankirtan party he hadn't expected that prabhupad would take what he had said last night literally <laughs> he explained how after leaving prabhupad's room he had met with his entire radha damodar party and they had discussed their plans for the coming year they were all enthusiastic and determined to make it the biggest year ever in book distribution if he ever to if he were to leave the sankirtan party now everything might collapse prabhu bhav the preaching was only going on on his personal presence there was no one else who could organize it guru kripa maharaj spoke up in support volunteering to go to china instead so that tamal krishna could stay in america and continue the book distribution it was a very strong argument 
book distribution is Srila Prabhupada's greatest joy and not, some, and not something he will jeopardize. Nevertheless, Prabhupada firmly rejected the offer. No, he, Tamal Krishna, must go to China. Visibly irritated, Prabhupada asserted, Radha Damodar party is going on by Krishna's energy, not Tamal, Tamal Krishna Goswami's energy. <clears throat> you said China, and I thought, ad- thought about it all night. I wanted to do something there and I took it as Krishna speaking through you. (laughs) It quickly became clear to everyone that Prabhupada was very serious. Madhudvisha and Guru Krupa backed away. (laughs) Their silence leaving Tamal Krishna isolated. His position rapidly weakening but still resistant. Tamal Krishna Maharaj tried again. He said that he had indeed mentioned going to China, but he might just as easily have said he wanted to go to the moon and preach. He wasn't being serious. It was a joke, Prabhupada. (laughs) Now Prabhupada became angry. Vaishnavas do not joke. You said it and I took it as Krishna's indication. I thought about it all night. We have no men there in China. And I took it as a good opportunity to do something there. Tamal Krishna was sinking fast. But he tried one last argument. He said that he could understand that his divine grace wanted something to be done there. But not, but any sannyasi could do it. It shouldn't be a GBC member who has so many other important responsibilities. Prabhupada's face was flushed. He, his back straightened and his upper lip twitched on the left side. His anger was barely restrained. Sometimes Prabhupada would become very angry. Very rare, but Prabhupada became angry like that now. His lips twitching. Why not GBC? All your resolutions are finished. First resolution, then revolution, then dissolution. And no solution. (laughs) I have to manage everything myself. I give you a little power and you create havoc. GBC is for for solving solutions. Not for creating, not for solving situations. Not for creating situations. Prabhupada was fully determined and fixed in his decision. He forced his disciple to surrender making it quite clear there was no option. I want it, but you do not want. It is my very strong desire. Now I take everything from you. You can either go to China or you simply sit here in Mayapur and chant. Tamal Krishna Maharaj Maharaj bowed his head and conceded. He finally understood there was no alternative and surrendered agreeing to do whatever his spiritual master required. Despite the prospect of foregoing everything, he had worked for several years to build up the most successful preaching party in the society. Prabhupada's desire was paramount. It was a fruitful, it was a fruitless glory if he didn't please Srila Prabhupada. Tamal Krishna asked only one concession, that Drishta Dhyumna Das, a brahmachari in Radha Damodar party, accompany him not Trivikram Swami. Prabhupada now wreathed in smiles, happily agreed, obviously pleased by the submission of his leading disciple. He strode out, took his morning walk, much of which he spent happily discussing new preaching programs. So, <clears throat> Shila, so it was in 1976 that this kind of a schism had emerged and Prabhupada settle the matter in this way. So we can see how uh, very nicely Prabhupada weaving in all of these principles of the Srimad Bhagavatam into a into the worldwide Krishna consciousness movement. And how we see Prabhupada had desire that in China, in Russia, those were difficult places. 
because there was communist governments and would not allow there was no religious freedom and such thing and prabhupad had so much desire and he wanted and he considered that as krishna speaking and he wanted him to go <coughs> so we'll stop here grantaraj shrimad bhagavatam ki shila prabhu pad ki hari krishna subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss any updates